everyone, my name is Dylan Gonzalez. I'm the editorial director for GeekVibesNation.com and also a co-host of the Home Dance Film Festival podcast. And I am so excited to be here with you once again for a very special episode of The Video Attic. It is another installment of Exploring the Warner Archive. As I've said before, uh, the Warner Archive is one of my absolute favorite labels and I'm always excited to kind of explore some of the hidden gems that maybe people have overlooked throughout the years. And uh, this this month in particular, uh, I'm doing a special noir vember uh, edition of uh, this series where uh, I'm exploring the genre of film noir. Uh, a lot of classic film fans, that's whenever uh, they really dig into it in November noir vember so uh i have a, a pretty nice slate of titles that i'm ex really excited to dig into so i'm just gonna dive right in the first one i think it's a really great way to start off our series um this is uh on dangerous ground with robert ryan and ida lapino um this one starts us off really well because it stars robert ryan as a cop who is kind of uh Learn, he's a, a little bit a world weary. He's kind of been beaten down by all the things that he's seen. He's kind of lost kind of his moral code. He is just, um, he's cool with just like beating people up and just getting, pushing the boundaries of decency like way past like their breaking point. And this all kind of culminates in him nearly being dismissed until he gets caught up in, into a new investigation, a murder that sends him out into the countryside uh, to find this young man who is the bro brother of Ida Lupino's character, who is a blind woman who has been taking care of her brother, even though she knows that he's not quite well, but she still wants the best for him and wants to give him a fair shake. So through this relationship, uh, Robert Ryan's character, this cop, uh, begins to kind of come back and kind of start to get a little bit more morality, more of his morality back, uh, all while trying to fend off this grieving father who wants nothing but this uh, lady's kid brother dead. And it's kind of this dynamic where it's interesting to see this character's journey from just at the beginning of the film beating up a young kid himself to trying to protect one at the end and how this relationship with Ida Lupina's character really kind of sets that on the right foot. It's a really, really tight, like really fascinating movie. It's a, uh, it's only 82 minutes, so it, it does really fly by. The performers are really great. Especially, I always love Ida Lupino. I'll be talking about her again here in a second. Um, and well, many of these people show up in multiple movies because a lot of them stayed in the same genre. But this one in particular is uh, one of my favorites that I'm going to talk about this week. And uh, I highly recommend it. If you just kind of like a really tight, uh, engaging film noir, this one's a really good one. There's a, a, some, a lot, not a lot of film noirs get out into the countryside. So that's especially exciting in the finale whenever that kind of a uh, little bit of snowy ground, um, countryside finale. It's really uh, quite uh, captivating and I highly recommend it. So... On Dangerous Ground, it's a really good one. And yes, the uh, the portrayal of uh, blind people is not the most nuanced, but it it's not uh, too egregious in how they um, portray people. It's done tastefully enough. Um, the next film, it's while it may be one of my lower ones of this entire slate, it's still quite worth your time. This is Fritz Lang's While the City Sleeps. And this one kind of ranks lower just because it is Fritz Lang, who is a master director. And this just happens to be one of his kind of more middle of the road efforts. But middle of the road for Fritz Lang is still quite good. This involves a serial killer who at the beginning of the film, you kind of, you know who the killer is and what he is kind of up to. But where this takes a twist is this is really a tale of how the media portray like gets involved and portrays these kinds of, and sensationalizes these kinds of acts and they dub this serial killer the lipstick killer just for no really apparent reason besides it is kind of almost like a deathbed proclamation from one of the owners that just kind of uh build buzz and sell newspapers and the dynamic between this newspaper team and a serial killer that's kind of lurking in the background it's really fascinating and um 
this is one film noir that's not as focused on the police. It is, like, like I said, more investigated or more situated on the news team and how they are kind of um, spinning all of this uh, material and these real life events for uh, their own benefit and rest certain members of the team wrestling with their morals of like what is uh right whenever we, uh morally right when reporting this kind of material and, so and sensationalizing it does it inspire even more violence and more people to do this this is the kind of stuff that are is kind of uh asked but not completely answered it's a little bit heavy-handed in some points but overall it's a pretty decent time this has a really good cast including a recurring ida lupino in here but then you also have dana andrews ronda fleming george sanders howard duff thomas mitchell vincent price i really like seeing vincent, vincent price in something that's not strictly horror i know he's done a lot but a lot of what i've seen from vincent price is kind of horror coded or tinged it's interesting to see him in a film noir in kind of more of a straight level role. It's really fun. So if you're a Vincent Price fan, a Fritz Lang fan, an Ida Lupino fan, any kind of film noir fan, this is worth checking out despite it not being my favorite of this slate. I just have a pretty good slate this uh, time out. So yeah, while the city sleeps, we're checking out still. My next one is, it, we have a queen coming through. This is uh, Joan Crawford in Possessed. I do believe this earned her an Oscar nomination. And uh, this isn't quite like your typical film noir, but I do, it, it does fit squarely in within kind of the whole definition. Um, Joan Crawford plays a woman who at the beginning, uh, in a really unusual turn, you get to see Joan Crawford like bare face, like no makeup, kind of stumbling, muttering through the streets, and you kind of get a sense of, that this woman is, is unwell. She's picked up by the police and some like doctors and trying to, uh, you get a flashback to where she's been. And you, what you come, come to learn is she's had kind of a torrid relationship uh, with the Van Heflin character. She really loves him. She's kind of like, kind of fallen madly in love with him to the point where it just doesn't seem reasonable and whenever he rejects her she kind of just wants him more and just wants to keep being in his life and any kind of like that they are always circling one another but it's a very unhealthy relationship and then whenever he gets into a relationship with a younger woman it kind of sets her a little bit off and there's like a little cat and mouse gameplay of like what each of them want from a real relationship and what this woman, this Joan Crawford character, uh, how she is kind of mentally deteriorating and wrestling with this kind of uh, scenario. And overall, this is a Joan Crawford show. If you're a Joan Crawford fan, definitely make sure to check this out. This is really situated on her. There there is a lot of um, uh, nuance within her portrayal and uh, just like the, seeing the shades of her sanity slipping. You, she holds it together a lot of the time, but then whenever you start to see it slip, it's very uh, engaging and you do just kind of lean in and want to see where the story is going. And it's heartbreaking. It is uh, thrilling. It is just a very interesting movie. And especially, like I said, if you love Joan Crawford, She's a queen, and she's really good in this, and uh, this is just a really good release. Um, this comes from a 2K scan of the uh, original camera negative. Uh, this is, has a commentary track and a 10-minute featurette and a trailer. Um, I got so excited, I kind of uh, uh, overlooked some of these. This is from a 2K scan of the Fine Grain Master, and it is also very good. Uh, it just has a trailer, so I didn't miss out on too much in the way of special features for this one. But I will say for On Dangerous Ground, this actually comes from a 4K scan of the original camera negative. And it is one of the better looking older titles that I'm talking about this week. It looks very nice. It also comes with a commentary track and a trailer. Um, so uh, catching up to the modern times. Or my, mo my most modern of the slate. It's the two, uh, my only two color films, but they, I still think they fit squarely in kind of this whole film noir angle, even though there's been going into the 60s and 70s. Two films with Paul Newman. Um, one's a sequel. We have Harper, 
and the drowning pool so we'll start with harper and this was this one was the one set in the 60s where paul newman plays the titular detective harper um or not detective he is a private eye and uh he is in los angeles and he gets kind of it's a classic gumshoe role where he, um he gets uh s caught up in this uh whole complicated uh, uh, situation th that's led by Lauren Bacall, which I, it was really great seeing kind of a slightly older Lauren Bacall, but still in her prime. Um, cause she starred in so many film noirs back in her youth. And just to see her hiring Paul Newman's character to kind of, uh, uh, find her husband who she kind of has contempt for, but needs to find him for reasons. And it gets all mixed up in this kind of uh, out, out, outlandish plan. It's not too. It's not too out of the realm of possibility, but it's just very complex, as you expect from a film noir of just like going to different locations, finding uh information from different people. There's a lot of really great character actors in this. Um, uh, you have Julie Harris, uh, Robert Wagner, Shelley Winters, Janet Lee plays his uh soon to be ex wife, and she's very good in a limited role, and. This is just Paul Newman having a chance to be like effortlessly cool, but also kind of um, beleaguered and like he's not at the end of his rope, but he is just kind of in a his world, his personal world is crumbling with his marriage and stuff. But he is thinking that maybe if he can get in with this investigation correctly, that maybe he can kind of turn things around. And does he turn things around? Well, about 10 years later, you come back in the drowning pool, and I will just say, Janet Lee does not turn uh, turn up in this one, but his real-life wife, Joanne Woodward, she does turn up in this uh, sequel. And this takes uh, the action to New Orleans, and this is just uh, contrasted to the kind of bright, sunny Los Angeles setting of Harper. It is interesting to see kind of the moody, gritty New Orleans uh, flair. It's swampy. Um, this involves a, uh, Harper being called in to discover, uh, a, this, uh, what, beh what's behind this kidnapping plot. And there's a lot of really great character actors in this one too. Um, like I said, there's Joanne Woodward, but there's a, a very young Melanie Griffith, uh, which I think it might be one of her earliest roles. And she kind of plays kind of a, uh, almost like a, a young femme fatale, but like in a very inappropriate way because she is a young teenager and just seeing how all of these storylines are coming together. It's a really fascinating movie. It has a fantastic finale, the titular drowning pool, whenever you learn what that is and how that kind of uh, escalates. And it, it just really had me gripping my seat. It's a really like really good movie and I think both of these Paul Newman is a like he's one of the best and he does a fantastic job in both of these movies they're both I would recommend checking both of them out um I might actually like Drowning Pool a little bit more but both of them are very good um both of them do come uh, from 2k scans of the inner positive they both look very nice um they also come uh the first the Harper comes with a commentary from the screenwriter and a trailer the Drowning Pool has an 11-minute making of vintage featurette, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, both of these are in very good quality. They sound good. So overall, if you're a Paul Newman fan, definitely check these out. My final title is a uh, four-pack of titles, actually, but I'm going out on a bang. I think this is kind of like some of the... If you need a starter kit for film noir, you need to get this set. Um, and that is the Warner Archive four-film film noir set. So you have... Uh, the Setup, Murder My Sweet, Gun Crazy, and Out of the Past. And if you are interested in just one of these, these are sold separately as well. But I do like um, the uh, shelf-friendly packaging here. Um, and just, I need every inch of space I can get. But for those, I know there's a lot of collectors who like to see the full artwork. So if you want to buy these individually, you'll get full artwork. But personally, I'm... I'm fine with the four film set. I think it's really great. Um, these are for, I, I previously owned these on DVD and like the first installment of the uh, film noir set that Warner put out way back in the 2000s. Um, I would just say uh, Murder My Sweet. Um, you have uh, 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 Dick Powell. It's another classic uh, 
man searching for a missing woman trope. This is uh, brings the character uh, Philip Marlowe, who has been uh, portrayed several times on screen, including like um, in like the Maltese Falcon and the Big Sleep, I believe. Um, this is a character he's just well established, and uh, I, th I think it's Raymond Carver's character, um, but. Uh, he's a classic character, and Dick Powell, is, he does a good interpretation of the character. Uh, it is a very compelling movie. Um, Out of the Past, this one is a really good one. I especially love Robert uh, Robert Mitchum, um, and he plays a man who gets uh, involved with a classic uh, femme fatale played by Janet Greer. And uh, she is a woman who... She is definitely, she's not portrayed the best, but she's your classic, like, manipulator who every, he's, she's, uh, um, manipulating this detective to her means and, like, uh, convincing him that they're in love, but then whenever things take, a, like, a turn, like, for, like, south, she is quick to jump ship if she needs to and to kind of, like, um, get into whatever path she needs to just to get, come out on top and, how Robert Mitchum's character kind of navigates this, navigates whether he is actually in love with this woman, and pretty sure he knows that she's not really in love with him, but just, like, navigating their relationship. Um, it's a really fascinating film. It's really good, and uh, Robert Mitchum is fantastic. Janet Greer is fantastic, and overall, really good movie. Um, I'm gonna say my favorite for last. Um, Gun Crazy is a really, it's like a proto, prototypical Bonnie and Clyde story. It starts out where you get to know um, uh, this young kid who he's obsessed with guns and just you see him like growing up to be like a, 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 an adult man who is equally like adept and obsessed with guns and just like shooting and stuff, but he still kind of has like a kind heart until he meets this woman who is kind of also equally like talented with guns she's like in a like a uh, a sideshow attraction where she's shooting like gun like gunplay and they end up kind of forming their own romance and they turn to a life of crime and he's kind of not quite as on board with the crime as she is but she's kind of like pulling him into things because she's uh that's what women do in film noir. They they ruin the lives of men. But it is a pretty compelling movie, and I do like the dynamic between the main characters. And it's just a really uh, fast-paced, good, uh, well-shot, com like great composition noir. My favorite of this one is potentially the setup. It's very simple. It's it's uh, an early example of film a, a film playing out in real time. So, at the beginning of the film, it's the beginning of the night of a like a boxing match that um, is being hyped up, and you follow all these characters. Most uh, prominently is Robert Ryan, who, once again, as I said, would return was on in On Dangerous Ground. He is back as a washed up boxer who is kind of like, he is pretty sure that he can get back to his former glory. He just needs to win one fight and he is set up to um, participate in this special fight, which he does not know that he is supposed to take a dive for until quite later in the movie. And if he takes a dive, he can become like a very, uh, he can be compensated very well for taking this dive. But he he wrestles with the fact that he thinks that he could potentially win, which would put him at odds with this mobster. And you never want to be on the wrong side of a mobster. And just kind of how this man who's in the ring in real time wrestling with whether he should do what it's like a short uh, short term windfall, which will have him physically safe because he is doing what a mobster wants with like uh, doing what is feels morally right to him and um how what the fallout would be if he does cross paths with this uh this mobster and it's it's a very short movie i think it's a little over um it is only 72 minutes an hour and 12 minutes so this is in real time and it plays out just like just like that there's a lot of very interesting characters you, there's just like a lot of people that are down on their luck around this uh fight and just it's it's a really complete world in a very short amount of time. I really loved it, and I think if anyone picks up this four film film noir set, they will not be disappointed. 
So this is just a rich array of uh, film noir titles. You got some stuff from Paul Newman, Joan Crawford, some of the best to have ever done it. You're settled. Uh, and so there's still time left in November. So celebrate noir November and uh, make sure if you have any classic film fans in your life, make sure, make sure to share this video and this list with them. Um, just expose them to some great movies. I'm, I'm betting that if you want to sample any of these, at least a few of them are probably on Mac. So check that out. Um, if you enjoyed this, please make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you're planning on checking out. Let me uh, know if you've seen any of these movies and you love them as much as I do. Uh, let me know what you want to see uh, me explore from the Warner Archive in the future. I'll be happy to do so. Um, but until then, um, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you're subscribed, uh, like the video, and uh, I will be here again next month. But until then, enjoy these movies.